Why don't you feel on fire for God anymore? I think most of us can look back at when we first got saved and see the excitement that was flowing out of us. We were excited to read God's word. We would get lost in the scriptures. We would pray and it would be effortless. We would just spend time and minutes and hours talking to God and it felt free and it felt easy. But then life got busy and we started feeling ourselves drift away. And maybe there's been seasons of ups and downs where some seasons you're so excited to read the word and serve and share the gospel. And, and then there's other seasons where you're just like, oh my goodness, am I even a Christian? Because I, this stuff seems like such a chore, like actually living this life out for Jesus, following Jesus daily just seems like so much work. And I don't feel like... I don't feel in it. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, today I want to talk about a little bit of why that happens. Okay, so first it's important to realize that feelings can't be our primary indicator to see if we're on the right path. The reality is, is that even though sometimes I might not feel on fire for God, I may be faithfully following him daily. And other times I might feel on fire for God, and yet I might be neglecting his commands. Feelings are not a good barometer of strong faith. So I don't want to put out this idea that feelings aren't uh, an important part of walking as a Christian. They are. They really are. I'm just saying that they're not, they, they ought not be our primary indicator of strong faith. They're not the first thing that we should go to to see, okay, am I living for God? How am I doing here? How's my fruit? It's like, no, feelings aren't the first place we go, but they are an important aspect of living life. So I don't want us to be uh, emotionally suppressing ourselves or suppressing our emotions. That's not a good thing either. Now that that's out of the way, there may be legitimate things that get in the way of a relationship with God and are causing you to be lukewarm in your day-to-day -day faith. So let's get into some of those. Unconfessed sin is the first one here. Now on the surface, this may seem obvious, but the problem is, is that we've often seared our consciences to the point where we don't recognize sin as sin. The key here is to reevaluate our day-to-day -day lives. The things that we've put into our routine that we've seen as normal, that we have allowed, uh, you know, this is okay and this is okay. I can watch this. I can listen to this. What are those things that you've let in that you need to reevaluate? We need to begin to identify hidden sins that have perhaps gone unnoticed. Then we confess them. This day-to-day -day discernment creates an active disciple of Christ rather than a passive one. Because here's the truth. You are either growing closer in your relationship with Christ or you are growing further and further away from him. And when we let sins creep into our lives, we're letting the devil get a foothold. Okay, the second thing that may be getting in the way of your relationship with God or, or being on fire for him is discouragement. So most of us can recall a time where we felt super on fire for God and things are going well and we have a specific mission or plan that we want to accomplish. I've been there. I'm a, kind of a big picture guy. I love to dream up things that, oh, we could make this film or create this brand and or, uh, you know, could conduct this like evangelism uh, ministry or something like I, I love to think about ideas like that and uh, when I was a teenager that was a that was a huge thing just lots of dreams um, and yet sometimes we're met with disappointment I know I've been met with disappointment of having this grand dream that seemed to be good and yet God didn't bring it to fruition and it's confusing when we know or at least we think our hearts in the right place and yet, God didn't bring our plan, mission, or goal to fruition. It almost causes us to question whether we should pursue further kingdom building at all. Maybe you had an encounter with an unbeliever that just went terribly and you feel so discouraged and, and you're not even sure if you want to go back to evangelism. Whatever the case is, here's what I want you to do. Get plugged in with community. Discouragement develops in the dark. When we feel alone, that discouragement is magnified and multiplied to the point where it overwhelms any thought of getting back into the battle. However, when we're surrounded by a curious and compassionate community, we once again begin to build up the strength necessary to step out of comfort into courage. Okay, so the third thing that may be getting in the way of your relationship with Christ or growing closer with him or being on fire for him, however you want to put it, is unbelief. Why would we be on fire for God if we don't believe him? Well, we wouldn't, obviously. Ultimately, if we don't believe God, if we don't believe his character, his mission, uh, in his gospel, in his power, in his love, and I could go on, 
we won't be motivated to live for him on a daily basis. So how do we fix that? You know, we in the Christian community, and I mean, I think humans in general, we like quick fixes. We want quick programs or verses or statements that can fix the, the problem that we see. And so when we see kind of our own belief and it's like, okay, well, I, I I'm, I'm having a hard time believing God, but I don't really know how to change that. I want you to listen to Jesus' words here. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith in even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Matthew 17, 20. Now, I don't want you to take this out of context and say that as long as you have a little bit of faith, you can make anything happen all by your power. Uh, no, because this doesn't align with the rest of the teachings of the Bible. Bible. However, what I want to emphasize here is the idea that faith, as small uh, as a mustard seed, is important. Just having a little bit of faith that Jesus talks about is where we need to begin. You see, we spend so much time glamorizing this idea of full faith with no doubts or no questions. Uh, everything is just perfect and we're just like that perfect Christian that just, you know, you know, doesn't struggle really and just has great faith. Well, for most of us, that's not the case. Most of us have questions. Most of us have doubts. But where do we need to begin? Well, we need to begin with that mustard seed sized faith. And that's enough for now. Like that's where we begin. So if you, you feel like, okay, well, I know my unbelief is getting in the way of my relationship with God. Okay, where can I be in? Well, I'm just going to trust him in this, this thing. Okay, well, can I trust him with um, my finances? I'm going to work on trusting him with my relationships. I'm going to trust him with my friendships. I'm going to trust him with my work. I'm going to trust him with my salvation. I'm going to trust him with my forgiveness. All these things, all these aspects, as we're beginning to read his word, as we're beginning to be in Christian community, as we're beginning to grow more and more like Christ, we begin to trust him. That trust is built because God will prove himself faithful. So to sum it all up, it's not about feeling on fire for God. It's about seeking to live faithfully for him as we repent for sin, grow in community, and grow in faith. Feelings come and go, but it's our job to put our faith in the one who will never leave us or forsake us. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you're new to this channel, my name is Isaac David, and this is The Daily Disciple, where I help you follow Jesus daily. Thank you again to everyone on Patreon. It is a huge blessing to have you guys supporting me, my mission and ministry. Uh, it's so exciting to have so many of you supporting me over there. And if you'd help, uh, if you'd like to help support what I'm doing over here at Daily Disciple, I'd ask you to help support in the link in my bio and give monthly to what I am doing. Thank you so much for watching guys and I'll see you later. God bless.